session. Our first speaker will be Yujun Tsai. She will present her work on 3D hand pose estimation with her colleagues Liu Aoge, Jianfei Tsai, in Johnson Yuan. Please, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yujun Tai, coming from Nanyang Technological University. Today, it is my great honor to introduce our paper, Weekly Supervised 3D Hand Pulse Estimation from Monocular RGB Images, to every one of you. First, thanks to my co-author, uh, Liu Haoge, Prof. Jianfei Tai, and Prof. Jun Songyuan. So first, uh, let me to start with, let me briefly introduce what is articulated hand pose estimation. Actually, in this field, there are many kinds of work, and for the input, it can be an RGB, RGBD depth images containing human hand with certain gesture. And we wish to get the output of, of estimated hand joint locations, which represent the hand pose. As we can see in this figure, if we can get the like 21 joints of the hand, we can form the skeleton of the whole hand. And we know that the recent years, recent several years have witnessed a surge in market of depth cameras and wearable devices, such as Kinect, RealSense, many other things. The advantage include that it is cheap, can provide 2.5D information, and achieve very good performance. However, there exist some limitations because we know that uh, uh, digital, such digital, digital devices are usually limited in ranges and sensitive to light. Sometimes it ha only have limiting the scenarios in real world applications. And also for the RG, uh, 2D pose estimation from single RGB images, there are some, there are many kinds of work, some classical ones such as convolutional pose machine and stack our glass networks have done very good job even in some uh, spaces in occlusions. So since there are many works for 2D pose estimation, we wish to think of another more challenging work. Can we predict the 3D hand pose from monocular RGB images. We know that there are many uh, color images in our daily life which are commonly used. And if we can get an RGB image from single camera, can we predict the 3D skeleton results? However, we know there, it is a quite challenging work and one of the most challenging point is that insufficient data sets. Take an example at the picture we can see. Actually, for our human eyes, although we can detect the, although we can manually annotate the 2D joint by ourselves, it is actually very hard to directly annotate the 3D labels by our human beings because we know that we can only roughly predict the 3D gesture. But if we need to mirror it in millimeters arrow, it is very hard to get a so accurate results. And also, when some people try to use multi-view annotation method, which is label costing and time consuming. And the reconstructed 3D labels may not be quite perfect and require further calibrations to use. Also, some people tend to solve this problem in another view. If we can, uh, if we can render some synthetic data set, we know that we can have some hand models and we can, we can project into, into different viewpoints at different backgrounds and get some data set. Uh, however, although it can get perfect 3D annotations, it is a little bit different from real ones. As we can see, the first row is a synthetic data set and the second row are some samples of real images. We know that uh, actually the texture, the lightning, and many other things are a little bit different, which means if we directly use the things on the synthetic data set, when we apply it to real ones, it will be a little bit different. So based on our observations, we can find that for RGB-based approaches, it, it lacks real data set with accurate 3D annotations. And exist domain gap between synthetic and real data. We also find that for depth-based approaches, it can get relatively better performance because we know that we get more information in the day dimensional, in the day dimension. And also, 
Uh, however, the disadvantage is that it is limited in application scenarios. So what can we think? It is natural to think of this question. Can we do RGB-based 3D hand pose estimation without complete 3D annotations and take the advantage of depth-based methods, which means if we can combine the advantage of them and, and introduce something else? So to explore this question, I will first introduce some traditional fully supervised flow for 3D hand pose estimation. Uh, since we know that there are many 2D, 2D pose estimation, many work choose to use a two-stage network, which means we can first get the 2D results and then get the 3D results. And we can add supervision on the 2D labels and the 3D labels. We know that the accurate 3D labels are actually very hard to get, especially in real-world scenarios. So this is a question that, is it possible to do 3D hand pose estimation without 3D annotations? Actually, we know that it is very hard because for CNN-based network, we need supervision, we need backpropagation loss function. So, so 3D hand pose should be supervised by some certain constraints, right? Now we think of another question. What errors can we leverage to constrain the 3D pose? So we know that there are many kinds of depth-based approaches which indicate that there exists some correspondence between the 3D pose and the depth images. So we think that maybe depth maps, which can be easily captured by digital devices, can serve as weak constraints for the 3D pose. So it is very easy to think of another pipeline that if we get an RGB input, can we get the 3D hand pose and then generate the depth images? And we add constraints on the generated depth map. And then we can control the 3D hand pose by backpropagation or other things. So uh, based on this, we introduce a definition of weak supervision. Since mean, uh, say if we can add loss on the reference map instead of directly using 3D annotations. And there's another question. Is this enough if, this, if we only use RGB and depth enough for this work? Actually, there are uh, some other questions how to get the relationship between the 3D hand pose and the reference depth map. It is important. Although we know there are some correspondence, but we still need to know the, the relationships. And also, we need to ensure the output of the 3D hand pose to, to output meaningful 3D hand pose instead of some, mid, some intermediate features. We know that if this is an end-to-end -end, end -end network and we need to output the depth maps, we need to ensure that 3D hand pose is just one intermediate output layer, and it can be any kinds of features. We need to ensure it is a pose, not any other features. So we think if we can leverage the synthetic data set because it has 3D annotations and can give us some guidance on these kind of problems. So to summarize, the system overview is like this. In this work, we propose a weakly supervised method leveraging reference depth map to alleviate the burden of 3D annotations. And we use synthetic data and real data for field training. Also, we know that it, is, it uses RGBD for training, but only RGB input for testing, which means it is still a molecular RGB input problem. So to briefly introduce the system overview, first we see that we can train the synthetic data ne network in fully supervised method to the uh, get to the results and 3D results, and we know that to get the regression, the input of the regression network is not only the 2D result but also some features from the raw images because directly use 2D to 3D mapping may get some ambiguous problem. And we find that if we directly use the pre-trained model to real images, the 3D output may not be quite valid. So to solve this problem, we use a very easy idea that we introduce a depth regularizer network which can learn the mapping between the 3D joints and the depth images. And we know that the 3D joints and the rough depth images have many similarity, both in synthetic and real data, so we show share weights between the depth regular rider. And we also know that all the networks share weights between each other. And for the loss function, we know that the synthetic 
the, for the synthetic data set, we get 2D loss, 3D loss, and depth loss. And for the real images, we do not directly get the 3D loss, but we get the 2D loss and the generated depth loss. Also, we know that during testing, the real images only go through the part of the of the network in the dot blind box, which means it only get an RGB input and get the 3D output. And both synthetic and real data are utilized during training stage for fuse training. So for the depth regular rider, it is, in, it is inspired from a paper in ICCV 2015 based on uh, a depth-based method. And we try to generate a depth map from the input 3D joint locations, which means given the predicted 3D hand joints, we need to predict the depth images and use transposed convolution to enlarge the features from a low dimension to a high dimensional results. And we also show some realization analysis. The, for the skeleton, there are four columns. The last column is the ground truth of the of the 3D skeletons. And the first column is we use synthetic, we use the model directly trained by synthetic data set. It is not very accurate, right? And then we try to add the 2D supervision on it. It works better. And then the third one, we try to get the depth regular rider with 2D supervision on it. And we can find that by adding depth regular rider constraints, the 3D post estimation results significantly improve the performance, especially in global orientations. And for the data set and evaluation metrics, we, we use two data sets, the synthetic, the synthetic data set from ICCV 2017, which include, uh, which is a rendered data set with large variations in gesture and global orientations, but seems not quite real. And for the real images, we used a data set from ICIP 2017 called STB, and we know that the 3D annotations are used for evaluation, not training. For the evaluation metrics, we use the AUC curve of the PCK score. Uh, in a word, the higher the curve is, the better the performance is. So for the, we also show some quantitative results. As we can see, the highest curve is the fully supervised method, which means we get the 3D labels for training. And the second pink curve is the weekly supervised method we propose. And the third one is if we only add the 2D supervision. And the lowest green curve means we directly use the model trained on synthetic data set. So we can find that fully supervised method is the upper bound of our, of our evaluation. And the weekly supervised method is between the upper bound and the lower bound, which, which shows its significance. We also show some comparison with the state-of-art method. And the red curve is, uh, represents our fully supervised method, and the pink curve is the weekly supervised method. We know that other curves are mostly fully supervised methods, so the weekly supervised can still work as a valid, uh, as a valid approach. Uh, we also show a quick, quick view of our data set results. And also, some failed cases. We know that uh, we slow down the frames in the failed cases, and we wish to say that since it is a single image work, we try to show it without any time smoothness and other things. OK. OK, so that's the end of our results. And we also show some fully supervised results. Uh, thank you for your uh, thank you. This is the end of my introduction. If you have any questions, uh, welcome to my poster position at P2B84. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, you you use depth maps in your um, in your training, but these depth maps typically are noisy and have holes in them. Yeah. How how does it affect? How, uh -huh. What do you do about that? How would it do better? Sorry? Uh, sorry? I think your question is the depth map may be noisy, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, this is a very important part in our uh, research work. So 
actually, we will first pre-process in the depth images to get the actually first to get the method of the hand. And also, I think the noisy problem is a very important question in even some work in ad predict RGB to depth problem, the, the ages, the contours. Some, some people try to use some loss function which consider less on the ages. I think this is one point to solve this problem, but actually, um, I have to admit this affects the result. Okay, thank you. And I think we are out of time, so thank you again. Thank you.